So the most points Shaq ever scored happened in a game he didn't even want to play. Diesel dropped 61 and destroyed the Clippers on his 28th birthday. The story, how he did it, is legendary now because Shaq explained what happened and how Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was involved. But that's not the real story. Ever since Shaq went on national TV and hashed out that famous night and how he took things personally, some of the people involved proved Shaq was lying. This video explains what Shaq says happened, then what actually happened on March 6th, 2000. Yo, it's Casey, this is AM Hoops. This is a really, really interesting story and I love how Shaq took it personally, balled out, but he completely made up some of the details. Which makes sense. I mean, Shaq is notorious for being a fun-loving guy. He's an entertainer, so of course he's gonna embellish his story. Also, not the hardest working guy in the entire league which drove Kobe insane. I mean, Shaq would come into seasons like fat and out of shape and use the actual games to get ready for the playoffs physically. So it should surprise no one that on Shaq's 28th birthday in 2000, he planned a giant celebration for after the Lakers Clippers game. He had his suit ready, plans to go out. So he wasn't trying on the court at all. Like in fact, he was intentionally fouling so that he could get in foul trouble and get less minutes and just sit on the bench and take it easy. He had just 10 points after the first quarter, barely even trying when he noticed something that lit a fire. I see Kareem saying, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. <laughs> now I'm pissed. You know? <laughs> Kareem, Laker, oh, now so I'm like, give me the ball. So I'm, I'm scoring, I'm scoring. He was pissed that his idol and a former Laker, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, would be giving advice to the Clippers and another big man like Keith Kloss. It hurt Shaq so much that he wanted Kareem and Kloss to regret it. So Shaq goes out and drops 61 points on the Clips. Phil Jackson didn't even let him finish out the game actually, which pissed off Shaq. He sat him with just under three minutes to go and Shaq said it was to preserve Michael Jordan's 63 points against the Celtics. Now that makes zero sense to me. And this is kind of like what tipped me off that Shaq was embellishing things. Why would Phil Jackson not want Shaq to eclipse MJ's 63 by just keeping him at 61 points? MJ did that in a playoff game, which obviously is better. And MJ was against Larry Bird's Celtics. Shaq played against a crappy team, right Shaq? But we played against the great Keith Kloss and the LA Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm taking the night off. I got to get ready for the party. Ah, uh, yes. Keith Kloss, which most people don't remember because why would they? He played just three years in the league. He was a backup. His most famous moment was the first viral NBA clip before YouTube. Now, I'm only going to show you like three seconds of that because it's actually a pretty disturbing video. Kloss was famous for being beaten up by like 30 dudes out in the streets in LA. He was a seven foot three big man who had a forgettable career. It actually makes sense that Shaq would score 61 on him, except Keith Kloss didn't even play that night. He was on the bench in a suit and Shaq just wanted to clown on him on national TV that day. It turns out that Shaq and Kloss actually had a personal beef and it had nothing to do with Kareem. The real story would not have sounded very good on national TV like that. So it makes sense that Shaq would kind of change it a bit, but it did have to do with Keith Kloss. The real story was told by Kloss recently. Keith says back in the day, he was an alcoholic and a total jerk. He hated Shaq because Shaq was so much better than him and would clown him all the time. So to get back at him, Keith Kloss would intentionally date any girl that Shaq was interested in. So before that 61 point game, Kloss said something to Shaq to really get under his skin. You like that? You see that suit I, I got on tonight? You like that? He's like, yeah, yeah, big Keith. I like that. That's real nice, man. That's real nice. I said, yeah. I just want to say thank you. You got that for me. He looked at me. He was like, what? I said, yeah, oh, well, so-and-so got it for me. I know that's your money. So I'm thanking you. Okay, that was like next level trash talk. I mean, to name a girl that Shaq was dating and saying that she bought him this nice suit, that is cold. 
Keith goes on to say that every time Shaq ran up and down the court, he would shout out a different name of a girl that Shaq had dated. Obviously, Keith did not pay the price that night. His teammates did. And I can understand why Shaq didn't want to tell that story on TV, but still wanted to embarrass Keith Kloss. But what's really interesting is that Kloss has now admitted that when he did that to Shaq and got under his skin, he was drunk before the game. He had a drinking problem even before the NBA, and getting all that money and fame made it worse. Kloss was in the league for just three seasons, even though he was seven foot three and a good shot blocker. Before the draft, Jerry West and Mitch Kubchak worked him out and asked if he had a drinking problem. Kloss said no, but the Lakers passed on him anyway. He ended up signing a five-year, $8.5 million deal with the Clippers, which was a really good deal for an undrafted player. But three years later, he was arrested for drinking and driving three different times. That viral fight? He was drunk. The 61-point game? Drunk again talking trash. And after his short career was over, he almost died. Kloss contracted pancreatitis after years of drinking, and he weighed well under 200 pounds, which is super scary for someone who's seven foot three. That was his low point, and he finally got sober at 31 years old. Now, it really sucks to know that he threw away an NBA career and millions of dollars, but just being alive made him grateful until Shaq started telling that story because he goes on national TV and calls out Keith by name saying he dropped 61 points on him. Then Keith's phone just starts to blow up with texts and people on Twitter are clowning on him for getting dominated. And Keith was actually trying to keep his cool at this point in his life and maintain his sobriety. So this was really bad news. But right then, another retired player, Steve Smith, saw what was going on with Keith, and he stepped in to help. Steve said, big fella, if it didn't happen, just let it go. You know how he is. You guys like to clown around, have fun. Just let it go. And uh, I thought about it. I said, Damn, he's right. So I made an amends to him on Twitter. You know, I actually made an amends on Twitter to Shaq about that. And uh, not too long after that, maybe a few months or a year later, he came clean and admitted that, you know, it wasn't me and that I didn't play that game. Yep, Keith actually went on Twitter and apologized for his behavior that night and trash talking Shaq in such a personal way. Shaq tweeted back and said it was all good. So it's pretty cool that they made up years later. I mean, it's not as cool as the story of Kareem giving a clipper advice. So Shaq taught him a lesson, but it really had to do with some girls and a drunk center who was talking trash. And if you like old Lakers stories, check this out. What happened to Derek Fisher? Because I always thought I knew about him, the Matt Barnes fight, the whole thing. But it actually turned out to be completely different.